it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Welcome to Branch Together. My name is Jared, and today we'll be reading from John chapter 15. Before we start, let's take a moment and pray together. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your servant, John, in this letter. Thank you for the followers of Jesus, and all the various people that uh, were willing to share their story of the impact Christ had on their life that, that gave us uh, these gospels to look at. Thank you most importantly for your son, Jesus, the life he lived, his death, and his resurrection that we see on full display in the gospel of John. Lord, I pray for everyone wherever we're at today that we would be open to learn more about you your life, death, and resurrection, that we'd be impacted and transformed by it, and that this might show us a good way to live in this world. Help us be a people that are full of your grace and truth. In your name we pray. Amen. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit he removes. And he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch, and he withers. They gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit, and prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants anymore, because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit, and that your fruit should remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is what I command you, love one another." If it hates you, understand that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. However, because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of it, the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they don't know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now they have no excuse for their sin. The one who hates me also hates my father. If I had not done the works among them that no one else has done, they would not have sin. Now they have seen and hated me, both me and my father. But this happened so that the statement written and their law might be fulfilled. They hated me for no reason. When the counselor comes, the one I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. You also will testify because you have been with me from the beginning. So we are in the middle of a personal and powerful section of Jesus' teaching. He's about to go to the cross and he's giving some of his parting words. This is a parting sermon, essentially. These are the words he wants his followers to remember and keep with them. In John 15, he talks about abiding in him and bearing fruit. Jesus is telling his followers, hey, live with me, be with me, 
stay with me. This is some of the reasons we do BT. In our scattered world today, we don't really abide with one another even. Uh, we don't have as tight-knit of families as we used to. Um, and we certainly don't abide with God the way Jesus is, is calling followers to in this chapter, or uh, at least many of us don't. But Jesus, he abided, he spent life with his followers, and he called them to stay close to him. Now, the abiding with Jesus life is also the fruitful life. And Jesus talks about this, the not abiding. There's this image of these, these tree with branches or um, where uh, if you're not connected to the source, you get cut off. If you're bearing no fruit, you get cut off, and that leads to destruction. We are meant to bear good fruit in our life. The Christian life is a, a fruitful life. And next in this sermon, or in these words, Jesus says love. He says, a new commandment for his followers is to love as I have loved you. Uh, that night, he tells his closest friends, he says, I don't call you servants anymore, but you are my friends. I've been telling you what I'm doing. I'm telling you how you're connected to all of this. I'm telling you all of this to help you love one another. Now, this morning, or this afternoon, or this evening, whenever you listen to this, if you get anything, get this. Jesus called his followers to love other people. If you abide in Jesus, if you, uh, I mean, simple Christian practices, but cultivating a life of prayer where you seek to connect to God and listen to God and, and continuing to, to read these scriptures and these letters that were written in the early church, and, and if you commit to being connected to a local church community where, where you and other followers of Jesus can, can pray for each other and care for each other and sing and rejoice together, uh, if you abide in Jesus... You become someone committed to self-sacrificial love, and that love is always worthwhile, and it is always fruitful, whether we see the fruit immediately or not. He then closes this chapter with two promises. The world will hate you, is what he tells his closest friends. Uh, If you commit to self-sacrificing love, uh, one thing that will happen is uh, the world around us doesn't understand that way of living and being. Uh, you look at the Gospels and you read Jesus' stories where he loves, he heals, he performs miraculous things for people, he cares for people. Uh, that brings him into deep, deep conflict. He raises someone from the dead, and we'll see that. Oh, we just saw that <laughs> a couple of chapters ago. He raises someone from the dead, and everyone in power wants to have him killed. So if, if you seek to live the way Christ lived, you can expect conflict. And then also expect the advocate. Uh, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit that God sends to help his people. And we'll talk more about that in the upcoming days uh, as John does such a fantastic job of of explaining a bit more about the Holy Spirit. Um, I'll leave with this. Abide, bear fruit, love, expect some conflict, and remember that the Holy Spirit is with us on the journey. If you want to bear fruit, if you want to abide in Jesus, commit or recommit to a deeper love this week. Get specific. Where is it a struggle for you to love? I bet there's also an area where, I bet that's also an area where you aren't growing much or that relationship isn't growing much or there's not a lot of healthy fruit going on. Maybe it's difficult to love a spouse or a child or a friend, but think specifically how you can love more like Jesus this week. Pick someone to love better this week. Sacrifice for that person. Serve them this week. Try it. Get out and grow a bit this week and see what happens. See if you grow a bit as you try to love as Christ has loved you. That's all for today. As always, we welcome your comments, your thoughts, your questions uh, about the Gospel of John or about anything you're reading in the New Testament. Uh, Thank you for listening, and we'll see you again tomorrow on Branch Together.